I distinctly remember the first time that I went to give blood. It seemed like the right thing to do. I was young, virile, not viral, key point, and <laughs> potent. I was going to bleed for their need. Contest chair, fellow Toastmasters and welcome guests. I was inspired by the altruistic nature of a friend of mine at university. When he went to give blood, he would go to the board where everyone had put their names down and he would pick the one group that only had girls' names in. So he could pop along and I could just imagine, hey ladies, how are you doing? Just here to, just to give a little blood. Just save a few of those orphans. Let's just hope they can get a needle in here. Oh. He never did get a girlfriend. Hmm. <laughs> when it came to my turn, I remember approaching the bloodmobile and the door opened. I looked up and I saw the welcoming, friendly, smiling face of a nurse, my vampiric angel. <laughs> I looked down, and there was the unconscious body of the previous donor. He stirred. You're all right, mate. Yeah, I'm okay. And with that ringing endorsement, I stepped inside. Now, giving blood is easy. A uh, slight scratch, uh, easily done. And so the first serious speech message, if you will, is if you're able to, give blood. But as for me, it was not to be the last time that I felt <coughs> something sharp inside me. <laughs> there I was, one evening, years later, the moon in the sky, being mounted by another man. Hmm. I guess if I know what you're thinking, it's probably the other way round. Well, I should explain that the mount is a technical term from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Seems a bit strange, I don't think it's strange. I mean, two grown men, sweaty, wearing tight clothing, wrestling each other for dominance on the ground. Sort of perfectly natural behaviour. But it's in, the, in these throes of passion, sorry, uh, in this serious training, <coughs> that my neck got cranked. And I, pain, like, ouch. And to make matters worse, he never called, he never wrote. <laughs> And um, so I should have rested. Injury, rest yourself. You should always rest. But I'm rubbish at resting. If I break a finger, just tape it to the one next to it. If my wrist starts to hurt, just use the other one. Broken leg, just run it off. No problem. But unfortunately, by not looking after myself, I ended up having to have a visit to a consultant. We had a bit of a chat. He examined my neck to have a little look. And he sent me to have an MRI. Well, if for some reason, my slim, pretty, female colleague from work, who had the same consultant and the same symptoms, had a different level of service. She was asked to strip down to her underwear, and she had to walk up and down in front of him so that he could assess her posture. I was absolutely appalled. I remember thinking, what's wrong with me? Aren't I pretty enough? I was sent to have a nerve block as a targeted injection, right where the pain is of anaesthetic, to try and sort things out. And so I thought, that's no problem, I've had injections before, you know, given blood and everything, no problem at all. So I go along, and I'm kitted out in this lovely hospital gown. And it's great, although, to be fair, it wasn't really my colour. No. Um, and I'm ushered in, the consultant says, hi, welcome, come on in, oh, I've done this I've done this procedure hundreds of times before, no problems at all, but just come in, um, but can you just sign this thing here, because a tiny, minuscule chance, don't, don't, don't worry about it, nothing at all, but uh, you could be completely paralysed, okay, no problem, just sign here, and I've come this far, so I sign, and I lay down, Alarm bells ringing in my head at this point. I remember a friend telling me that, yeah, spinal surgeons, they have all the finesse of rugby players. <laughs> so reassuring. And uh, so I lay down, and uh, the needle goes in. Very quick. I'm thinking, oh, painless, no problem. Again, needles, absolutely no problem whatsoever. And the nurse starts to stroke my arm. And I'm thinking, this is nice. This is why I went private. Really? <laughs> and so, this is going on, but then something strikes me, which is very simple, that in all the literature I've read about this nerve block procedure, there's nothing which actually mentions 
how do they know that they're in the right place? Because there's lots of nerves in the minute. They have to be exactly right, and they can't really see exactly what they're doing, and they're kind of feeling around. Not mentioned once. But I'm going to let you in to a little medical secret. They know because they literally touch the nerve. They electrically stimulate it. So it went a little bit like this. So, Mr. Greaves, is this the right place? Just, no! <laughs> That's how I'm feeling lying down. And suddenly, the nurse's grip tightens. Suddenly, the situation does not seem quite so sexy. How about now, Mr. Greaves? <laughs> no! <laughs> this went on for five, five minutes until he finally found the right place. Typical man. <laughs> <laughs> but then, as quick as it began, I guess, click, ch -tum, remove, done. And the procedure was over. I could, felt like I could run 50 yards down the corridor and my heart was pumping so hard. <sighs> but it was done. But years passed, the pain has come back. And I've got to thinking that, you know, if only I'd listen to my body, I need to a second serious message here, really. Next time you get pain somewhere and you're just determined to carry on anyway, just, just think maybe you should rest. Just think of the long-term consequences. So hey, two serious speech messages for you this evening. One, giving blood is good. Two, pain is bad. <laughs> As for me, I'm going to continue to braid the needles, and uh, I'm going to stick to giving blood. The nurses are a lot less scary that way. Contest show. Yeah.